We're all gonna die. Here are predictions for the end of the world. Number nine. Call Bruce Willis, assemble a ragtag group of oil drillers, and start playing Aerosmith because we got an asteroid coming in hot. NASA has recently confirmed that there is a chance that the Earth will be struck by an enormous asteroid on September 22nd, 2135. So cancel any plans you might have for that evening. It's a Thursday. The space rock is named Banu. It's the size of the Empire State Building and its collision could spell the end of life on Earth. But don't be worried, friends. NASA has a plan. Their scheme is known as the Hypervelocity Asteroid Mitigation Mission or by its acronym, HAMMER. If it turns out that Bennu will unequivocally collide with the Earth, NASA would send a nearly nine ton bulk impactor to push the asteroid out of Earth's orbit. In the meantime, the lesson that we can all take away from Bennu is to live every day to its fullest. Personally, I don't wanna close my eyes. I don't wanna fall asleep, cause I'd miss you babe, and I don't wanna miss a thing. Number eight. Many scientists and geopolitical scholars remain eminently worried about the threat of global nuclear war. Who can blame them? Nuclear capabilities have proliferated across the globe. Hundreds of weapons remain poised in launch on warning status. And we got tweets and veiled threats getting hit back and forth between countries like tennis balls. Thankfully, rhetoric has improved over the last few months, but the incessant threat looms over our heads daily. According to scientists, the aftermath of nuclear war could involve nuclear winters, widespread radiation sickness, temporary loss of modern technology due to electromagnetic pulses, and firestorms, which is when a fire gets so big and so intense that it creates its own storm of force winds. Many experts have posited that the fallout from all the fire and fury would precipitate human extinction. So what's the end of the world gonna be like? It's gonna be the bomb! Number seven. Hippies have been sounding the alarm for a long time about the declining population of bees. For the most part, no one has been listening because you know, who cares about bees? They sting and blue agave is just as good as honey. But it turns out if we lose the original bumblers, we're basically swiping left on the planet. Bees pollinate 35% of the crops that humans grow for food, which means that they are crazy important for our survival. And over the last 10 years, the bee population has been in decline and some species were added to the endangered list in 2017. There are two primary reasons for the reduction in bee numbers. The first, pesticides. Since the end of World War II, the use of pesticides in agriculture has increased exponentially. Pesticides are employed to repel insects and organisms that are harmful to crops. So it's not surprising that they have insalubrious effects on the bees that hop from plant to plant. Pesticides adversely impact a bee's central nervous system. It puts bees into shock and they forget their way home. We're literally giving the bees Alzheimer's. The second threat to bees is parasites. Parasites get into hives and deform the wings of bees, which is bad because bees use their wings all the time. Losing bees will precipitate worldwide famine and a decrease in human fertility. Ultimately, we wouldn't be able to sustain as a species and extinction would be imminent in a few hundred years. For the longevity of humanity, we need to keep these bees busy. Number six. Our number one priority is to protect John Connor. He's our only hope when the machines turn against us. According to notable geeks like Stephen Hawking, Bill Gates, and Elon Musk, we're speeding towards a T-1000 future. Robots and AI are developing at an alarming rate and many predictions have it that machines will match human intelligence by the year 2040. 
Marvin Minsky, an artificial intelligence expert over at MIT, believes that robots will start out as servants and will perform household chores. We can speculate that these robots' microchips might become dominant over the human mind because of our limitations of memory, and eventually they'll just say no to serving mankind. Robots aren't programmed with morality, and they could become homicidal by just deciding that human survival is an unnecessary waste of resources. Robot reproduction wouldn't be difficult to their superior minds, and soon we'd be outnumbered by our erstwhile servants. Our best bet is to start developing time travel now, so we can send Arnold Schwarzenegger back in time to save the planet. Or, you know, we could just stop developing AI. Whichever is easier. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell button to get notified of new videos, and we always appreciate a big thumbs up. Number five, is it getting warm in here? Well, it's not just me. The world's leading climate scientists have warned that there is only 12 years to avoid a planetary catastrophe and for global warming to be kept to a maximum of 1.5 degrees Celsius. If we move beyond that, we're looking at higher risks of drought and floods somehow. Extreme heat increases not only in forest fires, but also in poverty for hundreds of millions of people. On October 1st, a landmark report was released by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change advocating for the urgent and unprecedented action to combat climate change. So what are the most impactful actions that you can take to mitigate global warming? Reduce your driving, stop eating meat, and buy LED light bulbs. I know, it's a drag, but the results of a hotter planet are a lot worse. Number four, big wheel, please keep on turning. The Earth currently has an axial tilt of 23.5 degrees. This tilt is what causes the seasons. Some astronomers have predicted that the Earth will eventually fall out of this standard tilt, which would be disastrous. It would destroy the entire fabric of the planet, causing devastation on a massive scale. We'll be pulled towards the sun, which is super not good because the sun is like crazy hot. The North Pole will melt and within days will be boiled like lobsters. Number three, every few hundred thousand years, Earth's magnetic field weakens to almost nothing and then gradually reappears with the North and South Poles flit. And disconcertingly, our magnetic strength has decreased 5% in the last century. So what does that mean for us? It's not good. The magnetic field is like our personal bodyguard. It deflects space particles from hitting our atmosphere and eroding our ozone layer. If we lose our magnetic field, all life on Earth will be exposed to higher levels of radiation and it's going to totally mess with any animals that migrate. But hey, the aurora borealis will be visible from much lower latitudes. So we have that to look forward to, which is nice. Number two. It's undeniable that one of the best comic book series of all time is the X-Men. It's the story of mutants with extraordinary abilities beginning to pop up all over the planet. Some are righteous and some are nefarious and humans as always fear and hate those who they don't understand. Well, it might not be long before you don't need to read comics to get a taste of a mutant filled world. Geneticists are working on genetically engineering people to remove defects caused by faulty genes. Essentially, these scientists are turbocharging evolution about a million times faster than normal. Physical and mental characteristics will be able to be changed and we could have a world full of juggernauts and magnetos terrorizing all of us normies. In all seriousness, highly evolved, super intelligent humans will be appreciably superior to us organic, free range, GMO free humans, which will lead to a splitting of humans and according to Charles Darwin, the likely elimination of the inferior branch of the species. Start the developing the sentinels. Number one, new research shows tremendous pressure beneath Yellowstone National Park that could build much quicker than previously thought. This pressure is so extreme that the eruption could make the earth uninhabitable. 
Hey, that sounds like me after my second cup of coffee. The research gathered by Arizona State University goes against the previous estimates that pressure would result in an eruption in a few thousand years. The scientists now claim that it could happen in just 10 years. And that eruption would be 6,000 times as powerful as the one from Mount St. Helens in 1980. These same scientists do mention that the chances of an eruption remain small. If the volcano were to erupt, however, it would kill an estimated 87,000 people immediately and make 70% of the USA instantly uninhabitable. The gigantic spew of ash into the atmosphere would block out the sun. It would spew huge amounts of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere and create a nuclear winter for the planet. Thanks for watching. What are you doing to prepare for the end of the world? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and become a Badger buddy. See you next time.